lot of eight if you run out of eight.
All my mama, all these little, these little young women, whose God's hand is, he's got something for you to do that nobody else in the world can do. Yeah, amen. You've got a heart that is touches. Yeah. And a spirit that just glows. Mm -hmm. You do. God's already using you. You know why? Because you encourage me. You do. I appreciate you, Liz. I love you. I met this young lady this week. Grace, bless your heart. God's got something good for you. I don't know what it's for. You're going to be teaching Sunday school somewhere. <laughs> Amen. You will. Amen. Some of you are going to be up here singing. Yeah. Amen. Some of you might be preaching. I don't know. What got you? Oh, brother, this is a Baptist church. Don't you say that? <laughs> Read this book, and then we'll talk. Yeah. Amen. Read this book. I don't let tradition trump this. Amen. 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 Because, see, we've got good instructors, Tammy. Yeah. We do. We have young women who will come forward, step up, and teach our children. Yeah. We have some men in the church who will come alongside and help these young men. We've got women that come alongside and help these young men. Y'all don't understand, see? We had the bounty guy. She told me Friday night, she said, now listen, this is what, you remember? She said, now listen, girls. Don't you come up here dressed inappropriate to get in that water slide. And up, this is God's place. This is God. I love that. Yeah. See, we need our older like, no, oh, no, don't take no offense. Amen. I'm just going my own person. We need our <laughs> We need our young women to teach our younger women. We need our young men to teach our younger men what's appropriate in the society. But I'm excited. I know that everything is going to be all right. Everything, the future is bright in these faces. Go ahead, Brother Phil. Amen. We're going to have some fun. Put your hands together.
Glory to God. Amen. Bless the Lord.
But we learned from Brother Dean he was blinded so that God could open the eyes of his heart. Mm. So we hope that this is a blessing to you all. Um, and just listen to the words. It really makes our theme of our Bible school this year. So.
not here today, but whenever the teachers call the students' name, they need to come up. We'll start with the zero to five.
<laughs> Before we sit down, we wanted to thank um, Paula. She has helped head spear this this week, and she's really worked hard on the yard. Right. They all made a lamp that goes in the house and has a story of Paul on it, and it has a little candle that flickers inside of it. It's really pretty in the dark. And um, also, Savannah has worked really hard. Oh, she she's worked really hard. Yes. She's just so patient, teaching us this song. Like, none of us was doing it right. She's like, okay, well, let's just talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over there yanking and handing the tarot, but she did, she's just the most patient girl. And um, also, all the women who have cooked and brought hot dogs and brother bean and are just being here every night. And, it wears, you know, the preacher gets tired too sometimes. But he's been here every night with us. So we just thank everybody for participating. Amen. Pharisee, you know all of the scriptures. 
Why are you persecuting me? He said. And Saul said, Who are you? Lord. And the Lord said, Oh, this is good. Yeah. I am Jesus. He didn't want Paul to make any mistakes. He didn't leave any gray room. He didn't leave any uh, 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 room for him to to uh, explain away or to uh, um, uh, reason away who was speaking to him. He said, I am Jesus, the one thou persecutest. And it's hard for thee to kick against the priest. <laughs> Can I give you the New Oliver Springs translation? He said, I am Jesus, the one that you're persecuting. And he said, Brother, you are bumping your head against a gun stone. <laughs> you think that you have the power to diminish me? You think, Saul? That man, you are kicking against a thorn bush. Yeah. And every time you kick it, you're getting stuck. Yeah. Amen. And that's exactly what he was telling me. He said, Listen, it's hard for thee to kick against a prayer. And he, trembling and astonished, uh, said, Lord, what will thou have me do? Mm. I found myself later in my life from time to time. Trembling before the Lord, asking God, what do you want me to do? God, what can I do? And He's always told me. You know, he always speaks it into my spirit with His spirit. That's exactly what He said to Paul here. He said, uh, Arise. He said, Number one, get up. Yeah. Now you've been out persecuting me. I know the authority that those jokers back there in Jerusalem would be giving you. But he said, stop it. Stop it right now. Yeah. Get up. Go over here into this near city and wait. Yeah. Because I have somebody that's going to come and tell you just exactly what I want you to do. And we talked about this the other night, Friday night at Bible school. God sent me by to tell you some things today. God has sent me along in your path to instruct you into what God wants you to do and to help you uh, uh, in the way that God wants to help you. He sent me along this way. And, and the men, the men that were there with him, that were journeying with him, uh, heard the voice. They stood there speechless, the Bible says. Yeah. They heard the voice, but they didn't see no man. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Y'all don't catch that, do you? Amen. Stick with me just a minute. The man, Christ Jesus, died on the cross. Amen. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. The man, Christ Jesus, died on the cross. Amen. And in that flesh, he was buried yeah. in the grave. And he stayed there three days until Amen. God the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. He went in. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, he come out, dear brother, God Almighty. Amen. Amen. The Son of the Holy Spirit, he is the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 My, 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 my. No, they didn't see no man. God was standing in front of him. You better believe that. God was standing in front of him. My father is a spirit. If you're going to worship him, you're going to have to worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. God the Son, God the Father, just going back to the Lord. Oh, Lord. Amen. Amen. I would that some of you get that. Amen. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me do? Arise and go to the city, and it shall be told thee what you must do. Um, and the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man, and saw him rose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, so he gave him a glimpse, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he there, he was there three days without sight. 
Amen. and saw clearer than he had ever seen before yeah. in his life. He neither did eat or drink. You know what? He, he, he came to the realization of his, of his need. He came to the, the truth of all of the knowledge he had acquired all of his life through all of the scriptures that had been taught to him and all of the traditions the, of the church that had been taught to him. And he finally, being struck physically blind, was able to spiritually see for the very first time and come to the understanding of the truth that everything he had been taught from a child all the way till the, as old as he was then had pointed to one person. Amen. One. His name is Jesus. All of that became real to him in those three days. That's very coincidental. Isn't it? <laughs> hmm. Jesus was in the tomb three days. Amen. Jonah was in the belly of the lamb three days. Paul was blind three days. Amen. <laughs> and he was three days without sight, neither did he eat or drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him uh, said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, I'm here, Lord. And the Lord said, Arise and go into the street which is called straight. Oh, I would that the disciples could get on that straight street. Yeah. Amen. I would that we as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ could learn to walk on that straight road. Amen. The way is straight and narrow. Do you hear me? Amen. Amen. And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. Behold, he prayed. <laughs> And he had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Amen. And Ananias said, Are you crazy? <laughs> I've heard about this Saul of Tarsus, Lord. Let me help you out a little. Oh God, let me give you a little bit of 411 about this Saul fella that you want me to go put my hands on so he can see me. Yeah. <laughs> he said, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem, and here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. As if the Lord didn't know about that. <laughs> like Jesus was going to say, oh, really? I hadn't heard about that kind of night. I, I, like what, I like what Jesus said next to you. It's good. Mm -mm -mm. But the Lord said unto him, go, thy way. Lord, you don't understand. The saw guy over here doesn't have Stephen stoned to death. This saw guy has got a poster on me wanting dead or alive. And everybody else that calls upon the name of Jesus, that proclaims the name of Jesus, this cat can kill me He's like James Bond. He's got a license to keep. <laughs> now you probably didn't know about all that, God. So I'm going to enlighten you. And I want to clarify. You want me to go over there with that joker who can kill me and lay my hands on him so he can see me to hunt me down? And God said, are you finished? <laughs> are you through? Hush me. Let me explain it to you. He said, go thy way, 
because he is a chosen vessel unto me. Oh my. To bear my name before the Gentiles. That's me and you. You got that right? Amen. Amen. And the kings and all and the children of Israel. He said, I have chosen him as a vessel to carry my name into the world. That's what he was telling me. And he's going to he's going to proclaim me before kings. He's going to proclaim me to the Gentiles. He's going to proclaim me to uh, the children of Israel. Everywhere he goes, he's going to pro proclaim me. For I will show him great things he must suffer for my name's sake. But God, he saw the Tarsus. He don't like you. He hates Jesus. He never got that Yeshua is Jehovah says. He didn't understand. He wants to kill me and everybody else like me. Hush, Ananias. No do greater is he that's in you, Ananias, than he that's in the world. Yeah, amen. And so Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, oh my goodness, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way, as thou camest, has sent me that thou might receive thy sight. Oh, here it is. Are you ready? Yeah. Because in Sunday school this morning, you know how important this is. <laughs> that thou may receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> because he had to get the Holy Ghost before he could do anything for God. Before he could do anything, he was the vessel, but the vessel was empty, yeah. you see. He was the vessel chosen by God. God had taken him off of the ship. He had placed him on the table, but the vessel was still empty. The vessel had come to the realization of the truth that he had a purpose for God. He had come finally to understand yeah. that he was made by God, for God, but he was still empty. Yeah. And he needed to be filled with the power of God in the Holy Ghost. So that he could be effective then for God. You see that? Amen. Amen. Here's our problem. Here's, well, let me finish. And then Ananias, when he entered into the house, putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way, and, and thou, as thou camest, hast sent me that thou might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it, were, had, as it had been scaled, and he received sight forthwith, that means right now, and arose and was baptized. Wow. You see, the same order for you was the same order for Paul. Come on. The same exact one. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. He doesn't change his mind. He doesn't change his process. He never changes his message. It is the same. The message then is the message now, and it'll be the message tomorrow. What God is looking for today are his chosen vessels. What God is looking for today are his chosen vessels Amen. to be filled with his Holy Spirit, which is the power of God in the church to take his message to a lost and dying world around us. The reason, hear me church, the reason the reason that so many all around us, up and down this valley, all around us in Kingston and Rockwood and Harriman and Oliver Springs and all around us in Oak Creek, the reason that so many today are dying, lost, headed for a devil's hell is because the chosen 
vessels of God are not allowing him to fill them with his Holy Spirit Amen. so that he can fulfill the gospel. Listen, the gospel still has power. The gospel still changes lives. The gospel still transforms. Amen. But here's the problem. We don't want to let God choose the vessel. Now let's get God honest for a minute. We don't want to let God choose the vessel. We want to be like Ananias. Let me help you out here, dog. Let me show, let me tell you a couple things about this one. You don't understand. There it goes. You don't, you don't understand. They have. You don't understand. They got that. You don't, you don't understand. I don't believe they would fit into what we would call the criteria of church membership. Oh God. Bless you, Lord. We've got a nice little gathering of folk over here. And we really don't want none of that coming in and messing us up. We, 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 we don't really, I don't think, you know, there would be really appropriate, you know, to, you know, I don't think they really, you sure do want to talk to me. He's a prostitute. God. You want me to talk to her? He's an atheist, God. He don't even believe you exist. You want me to talk to him? Now, God, I know some other people over here. I can get right on with that for you. But Saul of Tarsus. Lord, if somebody saw me talking to her, pass by, man, the deacon will be calling me. Amen. Everybody be calling. Amen. Somebody said they seen you down there talking with this woman on the street corner down there. And we know what she was down there for. I said, I do too. Amen. And she needs Jesus as much or more than anybody. Come on. Amen. Amen. Because most likely she's on that street corner to feed a habit that has her bound by chain, and all she wants really in the depths of her heart is loose from that mess. Yeah. And she's groping in the darkness. She's looking. She is looking for a way out and she just can't find it. The devil has her so blinded has a, in such darkness that she cannot hear, she cannot see the way out. And you've got the light yeah. to lead her from that dark. You've got the light. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Black print on white paper. Yeah. That's not hard to understand. I don't need seven commentaries from doctors of theology to understand that. Yeah. Today. We're the salt of the earth. You know what salt is, don't you? It's a preservative and it's a healing agent. And it burns a little when you put it on a wound. But man, it sure does heal it up quick. Get a cut, pull a salt on that rascal, watch that place. Heal good. We're the salt for the world. We're the hospital for the hurt. Yeah. Amen. That's what we are. We don't have all the answers, but we have a roadmap to the man who does. Amen. Helen asked me a question yesterday morning. I just got up. Hadn't even had two sips of coffee yet. And she wanted me to do math. And I was at a fog. I'd been up late, been studying, uh, ministering, and all of those things. We'd had Bible school and all of that. And she needed to know how many cuts in a pint. And I looked at her and I said, I don't have any idea. I said, wait a minute. I got my phone and I Google, how many cups in a pint? Google said, that's easy. 
be right about that. I didn't have the answer, but I went to the one who did. Yeah. Amen. I don't have all the answers, but I know the man Amen. who came. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. That's what I'm here to do today. I'm yeah. here to encourage you in Jesus. I'm here to point you to Jesus. I'm here to tell you that he loves you so much yes. that his eye is always on you. His heart, his heart is always for you. Amen. His hand is reaching towards you. All you have to do is reach back. Yeah. Amen. And call upon his name. Amen. Allow him to come into your life and transform you. Fill you to overflowing with his Holy Spirit. Let his anointing come upon you that you can be the vessel, the chosen vessel that he has, and you can perform the work that no one else in the world could do. Listen, he had Peter, he had James, he had John. Why didn't he let them go and give it to all the Gentiles? Why didn't he let uh, um, Andrew or, or one of the others go? No, he said, Paul. Yeah. Paul is my man to do that because nobody else in the world that I've ever created can do it like Paul can do it. Yeah. The most unlikely person in the world turn the world upside down for Jesus. Yeah. The most unlikely person in the world is the reason that you and I are here today. Amen. Because he was God's chosen vessel to carry God's message to you and I, the Gentiles, the nations of the world. Isn't that good? I'm going to ask them to come and get a song this morning. Now, some of you are here. Listen to me now. Pay attention. If you had not heard anything else I said, I want you to pay attention to me right now. Some of you are here this morning and you have never surrendered to Christ. You've never trusted Him by faith as your Savior and your Lord. You have been chosen by God for a purpose. He has fearfully, reverently, wonderfully made you for a special purpose. You are absolutely special in his eyes. And he wants to use you. He wants, number one, he wants to save you. Number two, he wants to know you and you to know him. He wants to be your friend. And number three, he wants to take you and use you for a great, great purpose that you cannot do without him, but with him you can do it like no one else in the world. Glory to God. Bless the Christ. Father God, we come to you today, humble before your throne, but boldly through the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would bind every evil spirit from this place, cast it as far as the east is from the west, that nothing would hinder the moving of your Holy Spirit through the hearts and minds of these people today, Father. I pray, God, that if there be one here that has never trusted Christ, never surrendered to your Lordship, I pray that today would be the day that they would come to you. In Jesus' name, and through the power of your Holy Spirit, I've tried my best to preach and to pray. Amen and amen. Well, what we're going to say is that there is a Amen. Let's stand together as we sing.
as she continues to play. I'm going to ask you a question, a very important question. You say, Brother Dean, I've never been saved. I've never trusted Jesus, but I want to. I want to come to him. Would you pray for me? I wonder if you would slip up your hand. I'm not going to come and embarrass you. I would never do that. But I just want to be able to pray for you. Brother Dean, I've never been saved, but I want to be. I know I need Jesus in my heart. I know I need him to save me. But I've never done that, but I want to. Would you just slip up your hand and I can pray. Slip it up high so I can see. I'm not going to come and embarrass you. Amen. I see that hand. Is there another? I've never been saved, but I want to be. I need to be. Amen. Father God, I pray for those that raise their hand. I pray for the one that did not raise their hand. God, that know they, they have a need to be. We're going to sing one more, more verse of this song. I pray, God, that you would give them uh, the courage just to step out and come to you. One more verse. Amen. One more verse. This is your verse. You come. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let anything hinder you. Don't risk your eternity on pride. Don't risk your eternity on fear. Come. I promise you. One step. One step toward Jesus and he'll run to you. This is her last service with us and, uh, for a while, and uh, I know we've all enjoyed her being here. So. Yeah, we had glory to God. Good to have What a blessing it has been to have Mabel with us. Uh, we love you, sis. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. you got a wonderful church here. Bless your heart. I thank you. It's not going to be too long till a lot of them is going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen, sister. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I think, I think all that I have to do is just reach out and get it. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Bless her, Lord. Amen. All right. We're going to come back here at 6 o'clock tonight, and we're going to worship some more. 
Amen. So you come and be with us, will you? Uh, be part of that. We had 30, how many? See, it's 32? 38. 38. This morning. 38 in Sunday school this morning. Amen. Our hearts and minds are clean. Lift your hands for the blessing this morning. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you all of the days of your life. May you know the joy of his salvation, the peace of his resurrection, and the hope of his soon coming. And may you be a willing vessel of God filled with his Holy Spirit in the power of his church. Isn't that good? And all God's children say, Amen. 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 Amen.